Hey everyone, how's it going? Shuffles back here with another video, and we're back with another RTA Fight of the Night. Um, today we're showcasing Isaria. Uh, she was kind of a random pick on this one. Let's just jump in the video and I'll try and explain kind of what I was thinking when I brought her in. So you can see right off the bat here, we are ranked 24 in the world uh, coming into this fight. And we match up against somebody that's right close to us at the time. Um, I can't remember what rank he is, but we'll, I guess we'll see in a second. Uh, so I think we had just lost a couple in a row because we had dropped rank a little bit. Uh, we were up hovering around that rank 10 mark, uh, trying to kind of break the, the losing streak here. Uh, I was a little worried because the timer got up a little bit, but we do match against Iconic, and he's rank 13 at the time. Uh, we've fought each other many times. We both He's beaten me, I've beaten him. Um, so I know this is going to be a good fight coming into it, but I also know that he, because he's ahead of me, he's one of the few people that can give me more points than I would lose. So he first pick, because we've fought so often, uh, he does go ahead and first pick my Oxlots, which... Uh, it takes away from the normal team that you guys normally see that I run. So I go ahead and decide to go into my tank team right away. Uh, I could still potentially outspeed him, but then having two people that outspeeds him can be kind of shaky if he decides to go imprints and whatnot. So we just go f start off full tank with Cecilia and Maid Chloe. He goes the standard Bellina pick. Uh, he does have a really strong Bellina. And then into Dian. So Dian can be really scary for a tank team because she can just prevent us from doing any damage and kind of kind of neutralize everything at that point. So I go ahead and bring Alencia, who is a strip. And I bring my Tenebria. So I'm not going full tank anymore with the Tenebria pick, because uh, he's not going full nuke either, which is kind of why I decided to switch. And now, if you look at his team, he's kind of hybrid with his, like, he's got an Oxlot, a Bellina, a Reviver, a Heal, and a Kiron. Um So at this point, I'm kind of, I'm semi-committed to Viseria, but trying to think who I'm going to ban, who he's going to ban. And what my plan is moving forward. So I decided to go ahead, pick the Isaria, ban the Kron, leaving element advantage for my Alencia and my Isaria, because I was pretty sure he was gonna ban my Tenebria because he normally bans my Tenebria. Uh, in terms of unit selection, I do go ahead and give the imprint from Alencia to Chloe and to Isaria because one, I need the Chloe alive and two, the Isaria is my squishiest unit. So of course he gets first turn. He decides to boost the Bellina. Fortunately, I have immunity um, on everybody except for Isaria. So I'm a, I'm a little worried that Isaria is going to get buff blocked here. It's not a huge deal because she can self cleanse, but you still just don't want it to happen. So luckily, she did miss on the opposite element there, which is nice. We go ahead. My Chloe's really fast, as you can tell. So she goes ahead, puts up her immunity, and now we don't have to worry about buff block, and they have no way to get rid of that, which is really, really, really nice. Destina go... Or, uh, sorry, Destina. Dn goes next. Did I say Destina before? I don't remember. But anyway, uh, Dn goes next, and then we go into our Isarium. So I don't want to reduce the cooldown of the revive buff, but I do decide to go after the Bellina straight away. We land the strip, the defense break, and the buff block, which is amazing. And now we happen to have our Mind's Eye proc. So instead of using our skill three to strip, I decided to just use the Alencia into the defense break to delete the Bellina first turn. And thankfully, now we don't have to worry about defense breaks because we don't have any immunity. So we know she's coming back, but not having to worry about immunity is nice. I try and provoke with the Cecilia. Obviously, it fails. I have very little effectiveness on my Cecilia, and landing on a Ruel is not going to not going to happen in that situation. 
So he, of course, revives. He needs the Bellina, so she comes back at full health. Oxlots goes ahead and tries to be tries to do his skill three. And does land, but he lands on two people that only have their skill ones anyway. So I honestly don't care about that. The only person it could have really bothered was the Isaria. We try and stun the Bellina, that doesn't work. And we get revenged, of course. And she the only defense break she lands is on the Maid Chloe, which it's nice that she only landed one, but also probably the worst possible unit for it to land on. Again, we still have our reset here that we can use, but I don't want to reduce our cooldown. So I go ahead and defense break the Oxlots, and we have not yet a Chloe stun with it, which is really nice. We also have the Mind's Eye proc, so we can go ahead and kill him with our Alencia. Those defense breaks from Isaria with Alencia are coming in super, super handy here. And now with Oxlot's gone, that Bellina is all of a sudden much squishier, right? Because she has nobody to reflect damage onto. So she still has her invulnerability. So she gets to revenge again, and we still haven't been able to attack her, which is making this a little bit scary at this point. Finally, we land that Chloe stun. Uh, we landed on the Bellina, which is nice. It does prevent her her turn there. Dn uses her skill one. Ruel uses her skill one. And now we're back around. And because of Alencia constantly getting revenge by the Bellina, we have another Mind's Eye proc. So I decided to go ahead and reset the Chloe. I burn into this defense break on the Bellina so that we... That way we don't have to burn into the Alencia. And because we already know we have the Mind's Eye proc, we can then go ahead and re-delete the Bellina. And at this point, it's pretty much over. I was about to put up the revive again, but he gives up. So let's pause that. You can see we got 12 points for that win up to 20. Well, I'll show you what we moved up to. But moves us up 22.36 at that point. And we rank up to rank 20. So let me show you my gear. Oh, that's not right. There we go. That was my old, 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 old overlay. Um, I'm not going to edit that out. <laughs> realistically. Uh, all right. So Isarian. I don't bring her in very often, but when I do, she seems to always do really, really well. Uh, I like her in that situation, defense breaking for somebody, especially when there's like a Ruel and like, and you know, a bunch of high resistance targets in there. It's really nice to have somebody like this in here. We have Infinity Basket. I could afford to switch her to immunity, but I didn't want to give up the effectiveness. As you can see, she's got 190 effectiveness. Uh, which is most of the time going to get her to land on units like Ruel, DN, uh, all those high res units that you, you might not be able to defense break otherwise. Um, on top of the fact she has a strip, a skill reset for your Maid Chloe if you're running a Maid Chloe or any other reviver. Uh, she's been really nice in RTA. I really like her. Uh, unfortunately, she only works in, for me anyway, in certain comps. Uh, you can't run, you can't really run like a Tam Isaria in RTA because it will, it'll just get broken up and then you'll be stuck with a Tamarin that can't do anything. Um, so you need her more in this sort of role. And I think once people get used to using her in this sort of role, you will see her used more often. The, re the reason I decided to go with the Infinity Basket is because it's not really helping her, but it is increasing dual attacks of everybody else. Um, so you did see we got a couple of dual attacks in there. We got the dual attack to stun the uh, Oxlots. And I think we had another one in there that was kind of clutch. But this artifact playing a large role in that. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, just a quick short one today. We are having our patch coming in a couple of hours. So we will be having Queen Charlotte live in the game very, very soon. Uh, I was going to try and wait to summon on stream for that. But I don't think 
that's going to happen. It'll probably end up summoning as soon as it goes live. I'll record it for sure. And if we summon her, I'll put out a video. Um, probably zero to hearing her before stream tomorrow. And then on stream tomorrow, we'll be able to use her in RTA. So anyway, guys, uh, we are really close to that pity. So I hope to see you tomorrow. And I hope everybody has a great night. And that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you all next time. Bye for now, guys.